Hello and thank you for joining us on The World Now. Leaders of the world's seven richest nations are gathering in Italy for the G7 summit. Representatives will discuss issues including the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. The G7 summit will also involve leaders from Africa and the Indo-Pacific region and will discuss economic cooperation with developing countries. The G7 is a group of seven of the world's largest so-called advanced economies. The summit comes as a number of leaders face electoral challenges back home. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is down in the polls ahead of a general election next month. In a matter of weeks, the party of the French president, Emmanuel Macron, also faces voters after he called a snap parliamentary election following a resounding loss in the European elections. And Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and U.S. President Joe Biden similarly face a tough battle the next time voters head to the polls. <laughs> Top of the agenda is a plan by the G7 to approve the use of frozen Russian assets to raise billions of dollars for Ukraine. The U.S. proposal, which is expected to be approved, could raise $50 billion a year for Ukraine, as well as applying fresh economic pressure to Russia. The money will be provided in the form of a loan secured against the interest on the Russian asset frozen by G7 countries since the start of the war. If passed, the plan would give cost-starved and war-weary Ukraine another vital lifeline. Of Ukraine's priorities while at the G7, President Volodymyr Zelensky says he is after quicker fighter jet pilot training, faster plane deliveries to Ukraine, and more air defense and long-range weapons. He adds that he will be signing security agreements with Japan and the United States after bilateral meetings with the countries. The war in Gaza is also expected to be discussed. All G7 leaders have previously backed external U.S. President Joe Biden's plan to end hostilities that included an immediate ceasefire, the release of hostages, and an increase in aid. Migration is also thought to be on the agenda, particularly people traveling from Africa to Europe. Italy is asking other nations to contribute financially to its Matei plan which gives African countries grants and loans to develop their economies. Though the G7 cannot pass laws, however, some of their past decisions have had global effect, including backing a deal in 2021 to tax international companies. Now, the European Court of Justice has ruled that Hungary must pay a lump sum of 200 million euros and a penalty of 1 million euros per day for not implementing migration and asylum measures. The court made the decision based on its own December 2020 ruling that Hungary had failed to comply with the EU law on the treatment of migrants, after which Budapest was ordered to implement changes. Today, the judges in Strasbourg said Hungary has not taking the measures necessary to comply with the 2020 judgment. This failure, they added, constitutes an unprecedented and extremely serious infringement of EU laws. The court ruled that Hungary had not complied in terms of giving new arrivals access to the international protection procedure. It also said Budapest had not observed the right of applicants seeking protection to stay in Hungary, pending final appeals on their applications, as well as the removal of illegally staying third country nationals. In swift reaction, Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban described the judgment as outrageous and unacceptable, adding, quote, it seems that illegal migrants are more important to Brussels, uh, the bureaucrats of Brussels, than their own European citizens, end quote. Now, a record-breaking 120 million people have been forced to flee their homes due to war, conflicts, and violence, as well as prosecution. The 12th year in a row, the number has increased, and that's according to UN Refugee Agency. 
The agency said the global displaced population is now equivalent to that of Japan. We have details in this report. New conflicts in Sudan and Gaza contributed to the rise, which the UN Refugee Agency Chief Filippo Grandi called a terrible indictment on the state of the world. He called on government to tackle the root causes of the problem rather than politicizing refugees and turning to quick fixes such as closing borders, which he said would not solve the problem. Instead, he urged countries to work together for more durable solutions. New and old crises drove up the number of refugees globally as of April 2024, according to the agency's annual report on the subject. In Sudan, the war that started between rival generals in April 2023 pushed more than 9 million people from their homes. You've seen people coming on a daily basis by dozens in a very, very bad shape. And most of them are women, children, who have experienced an 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 imaginable uh, an imaginable trauma. For the UN, Al Fashir is inaccessible either cross line or cross border. We have all seen the <laughs> horrific news coming from the small village of Wad de Noor. We are also hearing of truly horrifying reports of violent attacks and casualties in the villages of Wad de Noura in Al Jazeera state. Some 12 million have been forced to flee their homes in Sudan, with over 2 million crossing borders into neighboring countries, mainly Chad, South Sudan, and Egypt, often arriving in extremely vulnerable conditions and highly traumatized. In Gaza, the war between Israel and Hamas has displaced an estimated 75% of the population, 1.7 million people since October. The world's largest displacement crisis remains in Syria, where a conflict that started in 2011 keeps nearly 14 million people from their homes. Millions more people were driven from their homes in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Myanmar because of fighting last year. The United Nations Refugee Agency said it was untrue that all refugees and other migrants went to wealthy countries, pointing out that the vast majority of refugees were in neighboring and low- and middle-income countries. Mr. Grandi notes the number of displaced people globally has nearly tripled since 2012 and is likely to increase. The agency condemned warring parties, saying conflicts that violated international law drove displacement. China has now opposed EU tariffs on its electric vehicles. The European Union this week decided to raise tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, claiming overcapacity and subsidies. The move follows an investigation into Chinese electric vehicles by the European Commission, and that's been ongoing since last October. Chinese officials have called the move protectionist. A Chinese officials say the country's industrial subsidies comply with World Trade Organization rules, whereas recent tariff hikes on Chinese electric vehicles, such as those imposed by the U.S. government in May, violate WTO regulations. The new round of tariffs comes as Chinese electric vehicle industries deepen its cooperation with its European partners. Chinese officials cautioned that recent trends could dampen global cooperation in the green transition. Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, declared a state of emergency for South several inches an hour, submerged streets and snailed traffic. The city of Sarasota was swamped on Tuesday with a record 3.93 inches of rain falling in just one hour. The rain forcing ground stops at both Miami International and Fort uh, Lauderdale Hollywood International airports, causing delays in excess of seven hours. In a statement, the governor's office said the severe weather and flash flooding prompted DeSantis to declare state of emergencies for Broward, Collier, Miami-Dade, and Sarasota counties. The National Weather Service warned residents to move to higher ground now. And power outages were also reported across South Florida, and some traffic lights had been affected, making an already dire driving situation even worse for drivers.
Florida Power and Light said there were more than 8,900 customers without power in Miami County as of Tuesday evening, and another approximately 1,900 without power in Broward County. We'll return with more stories from around the world after this break. Stay with us. Information is power. Information is security. Information is knowledge. On Label Land, we believe that working people around the world have real questions of their own. They want to know how the world of work operates, what it means to the employer of labor, how policies affect workers in the workplace. On Labor Land, I ensure we engage effectively the organized labor, organized private sector, and governments to get out of them information workers are in need of. I am Sharon Jason asking questions that make you get sense of the workplace. 